morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Yes, I sound a little bit cold because I have a huge cold, uh, but I treated it really well yesterday with two steam baths, Turkish, and some spray from Thailand that you can put in your nose. Really strong stuff they have over here, guys. Now, um, let's quickly jump into the charts because Bitcoin just surpassed 68K. We are almost 1% left and we make a new all-time high in dollars in Bitcoin. We already made an all-time high in euros. Oh, and yes, before I forget, of course, also a travel tip, a trading tip, some live advice and talking about the news because there's a few items. Oh yeah, and answering a couple of questions because there were two really good questions. I'm gonna answer everything in this video today. I'm gonna walk to the left side today because there's more shadow, there's a little bit of sun. I am a little bit late, so let's quickly uh, check all of those subjects that I was just talking about. Um, I'm gonna treat and answer them all in this video, guys. Uh, let's now jump into those charts that I said already before. Charts first, when all time high, bam. Congratulations, guys, with all the all-time highs all over the world. Yes, I think almost 30 countries are already experiencing an all-time high. Uh, Euro, yesterday, we had an all-time high. The dollar, we still need to make an all-time high, but we are very close to making that all-time high. We almost wicked into the all-time high already, but this candle still needs to go to 68,950 to officially create an all-time high in the US dollar. But it's very beautiful to see these high prices in Bitcoin, guys. Of course, if you zoom out to the four-hour chart, it gives you also a very beautiful view on how that wick almost touched the previous all-time high, but it didn't. So we still need to go up around $600 to create that new all-time high in US dollars. Does it really matter? No, it really doesn't matter because there will be an all-time high no matter what. So it will just be probably a little bit more early than normally. It's expected to happen before the halving. And you all know the halving will be in mid-April. So it's uh, insane that we're already creating an all-time high before that halving this far before the halving, like one month, guys. Amazing, I uh, congratulate you all with all these profits that you make now because of uh, watching my videos already for years and stepping into Bitcoin, maybe even below 10K already. For the other followers that follow a little bit less longer, happy that you stepped in between 10 and 20K. And for the followers that uh, started to follow me again a little bit later, I'm very happy for all of you that stepped into Bitcoin between 20 and 30K, guys. This is an amazing moment. You doubled, tripled, or quadrupled your capital in the last couple of years. What more do we want? On this chart, guys, we can see the extreme spot Bitcoin uh, ETF flows. You can't see the perfect numbers. You need to go to the chart yourself to see them. Uh, I will share the link in my Telegram groups where you can analyze all this data. Of course, it's for free. But we can see that the last day, we did around 800 billion in spot volume. The day before 700 billion, the day before that 600 billion, the day before that 400 billion in spot volume, guys. That's insane numbers. Of course, in the weekends, it's quiet. You can see that, it's that white space every time in the weekend, but these volumes are insane. And this FOMO on the institutional market will only grow. People will see that most of the spot ETFs were bought at 40K. They already have now almost 50% profit maybe even 60% profit. All their colleagues, all their friends will see this. They will be, shit, we are not gonna miss this train and Bitcoin is going to go above 100K so we can still make, still make 40K per Bitcoin profit, which is still a 100% almost, so let's jump into this train. This volume will keep increasing. The moment we see the volume decreasing massively towards that zero line or even below the zero line, that is the moment we also will see a pullback in the market. That's the moment that retail will start to sell all their crypto and also the moment probably that the new spot people, spot EDF people, are going to add more to their Bitcoin portfolio. Because I believe they really understand that Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century. We can see here that the fear and greed index is extreme greed, 90. I think the last time was somewhere in 2021 that we saw this extreme greed. When there is extreme greed on the market, normally we will see a small correction. There will be a small pullback. If it's 10% or 20%, I'll talk about this later in the video again because I'm answering one of the questions. I have my opinion on this. I'm not a financial advisor, just a dude walking the beach. But I do believe that something is going to happen because I can see some indications that some 
pullback needs to happen very soon. So please watch the video till the end so you will understand exactly what I mean. On this chart, I will show you the difference between the BTC log scale and the linear scale and why you should be looking at the log scale. If you look at this linear scale, you will be like freaking out. You will be like, wow, we are so high, so steep. This is almost like a bull market top again like in 2021, as steep as that. Are we now gonna top out over here? Are we gonna crash tremendously over there? That is the orange line that you're looking at. Now look at that white line. How beautifully, yes, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. But an average is only going up, only going up. It looks way less volatile than that orange line. And that is what you need to understand. You need to zoom out and treat Bitcoin as your core currency. Because whatever it does, it can go up and down. And there can be a difference of 50% and 20% and a few hundred percent up and 70% down. But on average, it is only going up. We started at zero. We are almost at 100K per Bitcoin. There will be a moment that the average will be 100K per Bitcoin. Your capital should be in Bitcoin as a store of value, the gold of the 21st century. This is going to protect you against all the inflations. I'm going to talk about that also a little bit later in the video because there is a shitload of inflations all over the world. If we take a look at the rainbow chart, guys, we can see that, yes, officially we left the fire sale, we left the buy area, we left the accumu accumulate area. Uh, we are still a little bit cheap in that area, uh, but from now, it is time to start to focus on those times that we arrive in the yellow orange area. From that yellow orange area, that is um, seriously FOMO, this is a bubble, you know, a sell, because serious sell, uh, maximum bubble territory is a dark red. When we arrive in those areas, you need to take your profits. We cannot only go up. The market needs to correct somewhere in the future to keep it a healthy market. So please always keep an eye on these charts. Here we also can see that now almost nobody in Bitcoin is in loss at the moment. It's like less than like 1%. It's like almost nothing is in loss at the moment. And that's because Bitcoin is almost nearing the previous all-time high. The level that the last people of the cycle that bought the complete top in 2021, they are now almost in profit as well. So everyone is in profit. That's very beautiful to see. But you also need to understand that when everyone is in profit, some of those people need to wait two years or even three years to get back in profit. They maybe lost their trust in Bitcoin in those three years. They were like, my God, that doesn't do anything for me. Like three years later, I'm still not in profit. Maybe they are going to take profit now. Maybe they just don't believe in Bitcoin anymore. So that can also be contributing to a small dip. Some people are breaking even and they have been living in fear for maybe three years. And they're like, oh no, fuck that, sell it. I want to be break even and never think about Bitcoin again. All of these emotions will, of course, influence uh, the bull market and also the bear market, guys. So that were the charts. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, the charts, short term, amazing. It will take another few hundred dollars and we have an all time high in US dollar Bitcoin pair. We already created an all-time high in the Euro pair yesterday, which of course is a little bit crazy because how can we be earlier with the Euro than the dollar? Last time uh, we both created the all-time high for the Bitcoin Euro and the dollar pair on the same day. I think it was the 30th of November, or something like that of 20th of November uh, in 2021, of course. Uh, today, uh, we still need to do it with the dollar. Well, we did it already with the euro. This means, of course, there's more countries where already an all-time high was. Argentina, already months ago, all-time high. Turkey, already months ago, an all-time high. And many more countries already months ago, an all-time high. Why? Because in those countries, they have a huge amount of inflation. And that inflation is devaluating their currency. And by that, you don't need to go that high to make a new all-time high in Bitcoin. Now, that is exactly happening to the euro. The euro is failing, just like predicted. The euro is failing. That's why the euro made an all-time high before the US dollar. Uh, the other charts, of course, signaling that the bull market still needs to start. Yesterday I already showed you, it's the first red dot. Mostly we have now 12 bullish months. There is a shitload of volume, of course. I also showed you that in the spot ETS, because the spot ETS, that's 800 million, 700 million, 600 million demand per day. That's a huge demand. The supply is just not there. And that is why we get a supply shock, like I've been telling you already for weeks and months and maybe even years. Now. I hope you enjoy the charts. Let's jump into the trading tip. 
The trading tip for today, guys, is stay calm. In all this euphoria that you are now experiencing because we are creating a new Bitcoin all-time high, please stay calm. The open interest is a massive level. I think it was at 31 billion US dollar open interest. The previous all-time high in that open interest was 24 billion US dollar, and that was all the way back in 2021. When we reached that 24 billion open interest in 2021, there was a 20% crash and we were around the same prices. I think in 21 we were around 63k when we saw that 20% crash back to 49k, something like that. That was just because of the open interest too high. It was like 24 billion. At the moment we have an open interest of 30 billion. So yes, I know you're all feeling euphoric. I'm feeling euphoric. I will be happy with all of my, I will jump into the sea with my clothes or the pool, whatever, when it happens. But I always stay calm because I know there will be a dip. If the open interest needs to be settled somewhere, we can't just go up, 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 up in open interest. Uh, if you don't know what it is, then please do your research. I want to keep this video a little bit short. I can't educate you about that. Maybe I will add a course to our course system at the VIPs uh, to educate them about the open interest. But when the open interest gets this high, there needs to be somewhere a correction. So if we go to the new auto high, let's say that will be 70K, a 20% correction of 70K would bring us back to 56K to 60K levels. So stay calm. That's all part of the game. Then the bull market is not over. There was just a healthy correction. If it will happen, it's a healthy correction to propel Bitcoin even to higher highs after. Just stay calm. If that dip comes, buy that dip. The bull market has just begun. That's the trading tip for today. The travel tip for today, guys, is about a question of one of the followers. So I'm answering that question and giving a travel tip at the same time. Uh, that travel tip question was, Didi, if you don't have a fixed address, what do you do when all your debit cards and all like these other things expire? Because you need to have an address to apply for these debit cards. Yes, we experienced this as well in the past. So completely in the beginning, I always used the address of my sister or my brother in the Netherlands because they now also left. That wasn't possible anymore. So we switched the system to taking rental agreements of one year plus. So if we take a one year rental agreement, you can get a proof of that address in that country. And every time when we don't use the months that we are in the house, we just sublease that house. So we make some extra income there as well. But we can always use those addresses to apply for these new debit cards or exchanges, proof of address, or all that, all that stuff guys. So it's very simple. Just make sure you have a rental agreement. And if you have that rental agreement, you can always apply for it. In those years that you don't need to apply for new cards and everything, you don't need an address. But that year that you want to apply for new debit cards, for example, because they all expire, then you just make sure you have a rental agreement on that and a proof of address because of an electricity bill or whatever it is. And it's very simple. Then you just tell those debit card, credit card companies, hey, we moved to this address. Please send the new one over there. When it comes to passports and all other official government documents, you don't need to worry because you don't even need an address for that. You just go to the embassy in the country where you want to uh, renew or extend your passport. We have extended our passport by now uh, one time in Lisbon. We also did it in the embassy here in uh, Thailand one time. Because if these things expire, yeah, you just need to ask a new one at the embassy. It will take two to three weeks and you will receive one. So it's very simple. You don't need to have an address all the time, but when you need it, just take a rental agreement, electricity bill or telephone bill or make sure one telephone bill or one of your telephone bills is still registered on your brother or sister's address in the Netherlands. So you can always say, yes, here, that's an electricity bill or that's like a telephone bill I can use as a proof of address. It's very simple. Even if you don't need that mobile phone uh, with that number, etc., just like a prepaid or whatever, everything is possible. When you start to travel, you need to understand one thing. Everything that you learned during growing up in a European Western country does not count in the rest of the world. Complete Asia, complete South America, complete Africa is not that strict and like organized and everything like, uh, like that, you know? You can buy proof of addresses as well. I, it's very bad to give this advice because it's not completely legal, but all over the world you can buy a proof of address. You know, in Mexico, Thailand, everywhere. You just pay some government people, you get like this beautiful 
sheet, hey, this is your proof of address or TM30 form here in Thailand, and you use that to have all your cards sent to. So don't think too strict, and if you want to think strict, then there's also a solution that I gave you just. That was the travel tip, let's jump into the next part. The question of one of the followers today was about stable coins. He was asking me, Didi, what do you do with your stable coins when you take your profits at the bull market top and you exchange to USDT, USDC or DAI, that's my three stable coins, what do you do with them? Do you just store them on your ledger or do you do something else with them? So, also there again, diversification is the secret. With everything I do in crypto, I always diversify. My stable coins are diversified in three different ones, USDT, USDC and DAI. And some of them will store back on my ledger because the bear market mostly takes 12 months. I will come back to another question about this bear and bull market now, if that is going to change later in the video. But I will store a part of the stable coins on my hardware wallets, for example, back in safe self-custody. And the part I will use on exchanges or even decentralized exchanges. Of course, by now, I prefer decentralized exchanges. I prefer to use Apex Pro because then I still have full access to my stable coins. They are in my own MetaMask, for example, or my own ledger that I connect with that decentralized exchange, Apex Pro. And when I stake in Apex Pro, at the moment I'm receiving like 14% on my tokens over there. 14%. So let's say you take a million US dollar in stable coins. Just to give an example, because I think a lot of you will be millionaires, you will have a million dollars in stable coins, at least if you listened to me and bought the dip. Uh, but let's say you have that million dollars in stable coins that you want to take a risk and have staked, you will receive like 14, even in the bear market, up to 20% return on investment per year. And why 20% in the bear market? Because a lot of people will withdraw their tokens from exchanges and these exchanges still need to hold liquidity. So they will pay you extra to stake USDT or DAI or USDC on that exchange. They just want, of course, liquidity in the market. So they will pay you extra to provide that liquidity. So in the bear market, it's always wise to stake a part of your stable coins in exchanges because they will need it. And yes, you will earn an extra buck. If you, for example, do 1 million US dollar and you get like 14 to 20 percent, that's like 140 to 200 K extra per year. I'm not going to skip a 120 to 400 K extra per year, guys. But always do your own research. Just choose a beautiful program. I'm staking, of course, on Bybit because all the USDT I keep on Bybit is 15 percent and I can directly spend them with my Bybit card, which is, of course, is a beautiful advantage because I want to be able to spend my profits. So if you stake everything on Bybit against 14 or 15 percent, I think, APR in USDT, you know, you're, you're earning 14 percent while you'll be able to, to spend them everywhere with your debit card. So there's more protocols. Uh, Crypto.com allows you to stake as well. Then you get a cashback plus uh, APR. And there's a lot of possibilities that you can use in the bear market to even increase your USDT while you are able to spend it as well. I would choose one of those. Oh, that was a very long answer. Let's jump into the next part. The news for today, guys, by the way, uh, we are now already like uh, halfway the video. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and let me know what you think about today's uh, Bitcoin beach and booties because there were already a few beauties and beauty booties, beauty booties on the beach. <laughs> let me know the quality, of course, of the video first and then about the booties. But uh, let's jump into the news. The news is that Bitcoin, of course, made an all time high in Euro and not only in Euro, guys. Bitcoin made an all-time high in already more than 30 countries. 30 countries. China, Japan, Turkey, Argentina, um, South Korea, already Europe now, making all-time highs in 30 countries. Not yet in the US dollar, but that will probably happen today, tomorrow, or somewhere in this week, I, I, I guess, because you, we can't stay too far behind them with the dollar. So, 30 countries already. That's showing you how many countries are having problems also with inflation. Like Turkey, massive amounts of inflation. Argentina, massive amounts of inflation. That is why Bitcoin is making all-time highs there. No other reason. Even Europe now falling victim to all that inflation and by that already created an all-time high before the dollar. The euro and the dollar in the last bull market made an all-time high on exactly the same day, probably exactly the same time. 20th of November or 30th of November uh, in 2021. So this is 
very strange now to see this developing all these inflation rates all over the world because of printing all of those shit coins out of thin air, euros and all the other local currencies, that is creating a shitload of inflation and by that also previous all-time highs already all over the world. So it's very interesting to see. Now the question that one of the followers asked, I'm going to tie the question to this news item is, is the spot EDF now influencing this bull market and also the bear market? Will the top still be somewhere September, October 2025? Will the bear market still be a 60% crash all the way into 2026, into the bottom? That's a very good question. And I can only give one answer. And the answer is, I don't have a glass ball. <laughs> I cannot predict, of course, uh, where Bitcoin is going to go and when Bitcoin is going to reach all these all-time highs. Maybe you can give me a, a sign. Is this a 10 or 9 or an 8? Yes, of course. I promise booties. I give you booties. <laughs> but um, no glass ball. But it is definitely changing the bull market. Why? We can already see this. We are creating an all-time high probably before the halving. This has never happened before in the four-year cycle. This four-year cycle is early. Normally we have the halving, after the halving a new all-time high. We are creating probably that all-time high one month before the halving. So we are ahead of the curve. Does that mean that the top will also be there before the curve? It's difficult to answer this question but the thing that we can see is that the spot ETF volume is massive and we just don't know when those millionaires, when those billionaires, when all those institutional investors will stop buying Bitcoins through these spot ETFs. If you look at last week, it was like 400 million, 500 million, 800 million, 600 million, 700 million Bitcoin volume in dollars bought every day. Of course, a little bit outflows as well, but still net it was 600, 500, 300 million in the last three days. If this accumulation of Bitcoin continues like this, like if they even are prepared to buy Bitcoin at 60k, 70k, 80k, 90k, 100k, then of course that price will be going up way quicker than normally and maybe we can see this top also a little bit more early than normally. But there will be a moment, in my honest opinion, that even these investment companies will say, hey, wow, Bitcoin 100k, uh, should we still buy? Is it still positive for the future? And it all depends on how convinced that these companies are about Bitcoin being the gold of the 21st century. So if they really believe that Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century, they will keep accumulating. If they just use Bitcoin now to make a short-term profit and then dump it onto the market, of course, then Bitcoin will do something else. And that is not exactly the thing we cannot analyze. In the last three, four cycles, we saw retail investors. And we, of course, can um, analyze and understand all that human psychology, of course. Yes, yeah, sorry, you missed those two. Yeah, sorry, sometimes I also need to say something in a different way. But we can analyze that, we can see the difference. And now this new group of people, these spot ETFs, are entering the market and we just don't know how they act on this market. We don't know if they are like selling early or if they do it really long term and they are like, ah, we're going to do a very long term investment. It's the goal of the 21st century. So it all depends on that. So if I were you, I would keep a close eye to all the volumes in that spot ETF market. I think that's very important. Also, of course, the retail, everything still needs to phone win. I can see my DMs growing every day. People that I didn't hear about or hear from like years and now they are like, uh, should I buy Bitcoin now? No, you should have watched and kept watching my videos and bought Bitcoin around 16K to 20K. Don't contact me now. Don't pretend to be a follower. <laughs> you should be following me all the bear market through as well. At least not next bull bear market, because next bear market I will take a pause. But yes, uh, that's my answer uh, to the question and also the news. I do believe the spot ETF is changing the cycle. I don't know if it will also change the top. Normally it's 17 to 18 months after the halving. That's why we say September, October 2025, because the last four times it was 17 months after the halving. I think it can change the height of the bull market top, definitely, because there's way more liquidity coming into the market. But on the other hand, because that way more liquidity is coming from rich people, uh, the poor people will always think now the retail, ah, now it's too expensive to buy Bitcoin, so there will be less retail liquidity, more institutional liquidity. So probably the liquidity will be averaging out. So let's see. 
the moment I can see in the charts, yes, this is completely changing. Yes, we are going to go way above 100K. I will be honest as well, guys. But please remember, there is enough indicators online that will show you when the top is near. And when those indicators are telling us that the top is near, start to dollar cost average out. Take some profits. Profit is profit. Don't be that greedy bastard that wants to take profit exactly at the top of the market because you won't succeed. You won't succeed. It's very difficult to predict the exact top of the market. You need to be like having a glass ball for that and that's like very difficult. Number, <laughs> yes. So for me, it's very important that you say, no, I will dollar cost average out. I listened to Didi, I bought between 16 and 25K. And you know, when it's 100K, I will take profit. When it's 80K, I will take profit. When it's 150K, I will take profit. And maybe 10% of my portfolio, I will keep in to the end, or 20%, if you're a little bit more risky, I will keep till the end, maybe to few hundred K. Because always remember, you can always buy back those Bitcoins. And again, when they grow further, you will make another profit. Not as much as you could have made, but that's the greed talking in you. You cannot focus on just maximizing your profits. Take your profits, and when you think later Bitcoin is not retracing, I want to step in, step in and take more profits. Don't FOMO too much, and please stay calm. Now, that's the news item. Yes, okay, I understood the message. I need to walk the beach every day around nine o'clock, a little bit later, because then it's all the beauty on the beach and Bitcoin. Beach, beauty, booty, and boobs. Everything combined. Nothing more perfect in life. So let's jump now into the inspirational quote, guys. The inspirational quote um, for today is, do you see that beautiful ocean over there? You will never be able to cross that ocean if you are afraid to lose the sight of land. And that is what you need to understand. To be able to cross oceans, to be able to change life, to be able to take huge decisions in your life. You need to lose the fear of everything that you're leaving behind. You need to be very courageous. Just replace fear with courage. It's very simple. Don't accept fear into your life. Only accept courage. When you see that ocean and you want to swim that ocean, build up courage that you're able to do it. There's a beautiful documentary, by the way, on Netflix that I watched a week or two ago about an elderly woman, about 60 to 70 years old, and she wanted to swim, I think, from poor America to some kind of island. I think it was the largest swim ever. Yeah, she tested, she did it like three or four times at the end. I'm not gonna uh, tell you the end. You need to watch the documentary, but she wanted to cross the ocean swimming. So that's a very beautiful story. And that's exactly what it is to life. You need to lose the fear. If you lose the fear of all the things that you can lose, you will be able to achieve a shitload in the future. If you always let yourself be pulled back because of those fears, because of those uncertainties, because of all that doubt, you will never achieve these goals. Then please be happy with the normal life that you're living. Just accept that life as your normal life, the full 50 years ahead. Just be this normal life living person. That's not bad. Some people just don't have the courage to change life. And some people also even don't need to change life. Some people are just very happy with a normal, uh, I, I say normal because that's educated as a normal, a normal life. Just go to your job, come home, have dinner, do some sports, you know, and repeat that uh, 65 years until your pension, uh, and then to find out that your pension purchasing power is like 50 to 100% less than it was intended to be. Some people just prefer to have that life. And that's not bad at all. But for all those that want to change life, that quote for today is very important. If you want to cross an ocean, you need to be able to lose the fear of losing sight of the shore. But because there will be a moment you will only be surrounded by water, no shore near, and you need to have courage to keep swimming in the direction that you want to swim. Because that is how you achieve goals, guys. So that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, then please give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? Yes, sadly not an altar high yet, because else you would have seen me running into the water. Uh, but let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. I still sound a little bit coldy. Uh, tomorrow I'm again back, probably again on the beach. See you tomorrow. Bam.